This is the king an encounter with which does not promise anything good. It's a rare, long-living shark and a frightening fish coming from a nightmare. In this edition, you'll see the most unusual creatures that were washed away by the oceans and seas. Let's start with a subscriber shot. He's told he found this shot in some closed sources his fellow scientists were engaged with. Allegedly, in 2020, on the coast of Australia, in the early morning, appeared this monster. People who saw it were immediately left speechless and called out the law enforcement services. The explorers who arrived on the scene quickly asked the police to cordon off the area and give them some time. The eyewitnesses were sure that it was an anomalous squid from an ancient lineage, but as it later turned out, it was not someone from another planet. Based on the DNA analysis, the creature does not belong to any marine life known to science, and its sizes, as it seems to me, once again confirm that, needless to mention the number of tentacles. How do you think this monster could have ended up on Earth, and what was it doing there? Let me know in the comments. Fish Soccer Ball You don't have to be enormous to scare people. This fish, left on the shore, accomplished the task 100%, even though it wasn't the biggest fish in the world. It was discovered by an ordinary man who went jogging early in the morning along the shore. Usually, the man met well-known fishes, crustaceans, and other normal beings thrown on land, but this time he noticed something clearly out of the ordinary. From afar, he thought it was a giant jellyfish. Looking closer at it, he was surprised. He said the mouth of the creature was covered with blood. Either it had been damaged by the waves or it was about to be eaten by someone. Not knowing what kind of fish it was, the man published a photo of the creature online, scaring social media users. Scientists quickly got in touch with him, asked for the location where it was discovered, and went there. The researchers who arrived had kittens because of the discovery made by the man. But no one understood what it was that had excited them. Could it be that it was someone not from this planet too? And people were excited about getting a bonus or promotion? One alien more? That's what I thought to myself as soon as I saw this video for the first time. The story happened to a girl who was relaxing on her favorite beach in Washington. She was lying quietly on the beach and thought about nothing, but suddenly, turning over on the other side, noticed something strange near her. This something was hidden in the sand, only its head was visible. When the girl came closer, her heart skipped a beat as she realized that the creature was alive. The frightened woman immediately rushed to the nearest rescuer and told him that there was someone alive and that was an alien monster. People arrived at the spot already in the company of a professional who began to extract the creature from the sand. As it later turned out, fortunately it was not an alien, it was the Pacific snake eel living to the south from that location. The poor thing was probably washed out there by the tide, so it hid out waiting for the weather to improve. People thought that the creature was too sluggish and weak to return it to the ocean, so they first took it to a laboratory where experienced specialists treated the animal and then threw it into the ocean. The next, not less frightening situation occurred in Indonesia. As we all know, people have been talking about the Kraken since ancient times, about the very giant shellfish that's more than 131 feet long. Allegedly, it swims in the oceans of the whole world, hunting people, trying to catch the youngsters. I cannot see the point in telling the whole story now, so I suggest that we go straight to the point. As I've said, something strange happened in Indonesia. Kraken was washed away on the shore. Well, or something that looked a lot like it. The length of the body was almost 50 feet. What's more, it was surely not a whole part of it, but some piece. The creature was probably even bigger when it was alive. The giant, or in other words, its piece, weighed about 30 tons. To remove it with their own hands wasn't possible, so people resorted to technology. While they were organizing all this under the hot Indonesian sun, the body of the unknown sea giant began to color red the water around them. Oceanographers set out to the site at the first opportunity and declared that it was not a whale or even a sperm whale, but what was it? After all, can it be that the Kraken really exists? Rare finding. In order to get acquainted with the next finding, you and I have to move to the UK. After all, in 2022, people happened to find the body of the Greenland shark on one of the coasts that's considered as the most long-living in the world. According to scientists, the specimen they found was about 500 years old. In fact, such discoveries play a huge role in the development of science. After all, thanks to them, people were able to establish that these sharks can grow up to 23 feet long. It also became known that those are the most northern and the most 
most cold loving of all sharks. The analysis of scientists showed that the average life expectancy of the Greenland sharks reaches at least 272 years. That makes them record long livers among vertebrates. It's unclear what lets them exist for so long. People used to think that it's all about their unique diet, but as it turns out, it's quite ordinary. It includes a variety of fishes, seals, and even carrion. I think the main factor that's keeping this thing alive for so long is its size. Think for yourself, there's simply no one in the northern waters to hunt a 20-foot giant. Secondly, it's a real slacker. I don't want to insult it. Anyway, I'm talking about its metabolism. The shark has almost all its processes slowed down, including aging. And despite the fact that it doesn't swim at a high speed, its characteristic features are more than enough to successfully hunt and furrow the cold waters. Strange creature from the depth. Where do you think that was found? Perhaps in the UK? Or off the coast of the States? Of course not, because everyone has long known that all the strangest, and at the same time scary things, live only around Australia. A resident of Sydney discovered this monster near to the shore, jogging early in the morning. According to him, although he's good at biology, he never encountered anything like this before. Relying on the man, the strange monster tangled in the seaweed due to a strong storm that had occurred the previous day, and as a result, it was found on the shore. Wishing to shed light on this mystery, the man who found the creature consulted with the caretaker of the Sydney Sea Life Aquarium. The woman would not give a straight answer for a long time and finally stated that they were most likely to see the crampfish. The species was first described in 1795. It's not on the verge of extinction and in fact can be found along almost the entire coast of Australia at a depth of up to 650 feet. However, the specimen found was slightly different from its fellows, either because of a mutation or simply because of the circumstances. Those lips alone say a lot. They look like the devilfish had it made by its own sea plastic surgeon. As for me, I'm still thinking that this is not a devilfish at all, but someone alien. I suggest that we should stay in Australia and take a look at another phenomenon that happened there in December 2017. In winter, Australians discovered a nightmarish mass of many strange sea creatures off one of the coasts. The scene looked really horrific. Creatures appeared to be dead but were actually still alive. They looked soft but at the same time slimy, possibly dangerous but also incredibly interesting at the same time. So who were they? This is the question asked by the dumbfounded witnesses to the scientists and they confidently gave them an answer. You can see a cluster of Portuguese ships. Those were not the ones made from paper by the sea residents, but quite dangerous, though unremarkable animals. The gelatinous organism reaches up to about a foot long, filled with gas and floating on the surface. Its stalking tentacles carry a huge number of cells capable of causing harm to humans. The affected area, in contrast with them, mainly causes severe local pain, accompanied by peeling, redness, and irritation. It can also affect the well-being of the victim in general. Person in contact will experience headaches and nausea. And this all arises from the contact with just one specimen. Imagine what could happen if the victim is attacked by a whole colony of such ships. The scientists believe that in this case, their power is enough to send even a large sea creature to the other side of the world. Mysterious Fish This finding was made in 2017 in Santa Barbara. A man was walking along the shore with his son and noticed a strange fish ashore. It reminded them of a moonfish. Anyway, the man was good at all its species and realized that it didn't belong to any one of them. Specialists from America needed the help of other scientists from Australia and New Zealand to study the species. It turned out it was indeed a moonfish, but of a new species. Its main difference from its relatives was its size. They were much larger than usual. However, it's not always the case that a beach creature makes the scientists smile and feel joy being able to explore something. For a long time, local people in Peru have thought that if a king of the herrings is thrown ashore, they should expect a trouble. People have believed this legend for decades, and not only in South America. This belief is associated with a devastating earthquake and tsunami that occurred in Japan in 2011. Before that, dozens of kings were allegedly washed away on the shores of Japan. Many residents of a Peruvian village who discovered this harbinger fish fish rushed to leave the beach, fearing a tsunami. Fishermen tried to help the huge fish back into the sea, but it could not be saved. What would you have done at that moment? Would you also have left the shore far away? Or would you have ignored everything and continued to live as usual? 
The following images were shared with the public by a resident of Texas who came home after traveling around Australia. She says that one evening she found this strange creature on the beach. At first, it seemed to be a snake. However, the disproportionate size quickly overthrew this option. Then the woman thought it was an ordinary fish. But again, the shape of the creature was not similar to any other form of fish known to people. Not being able to suppose something, she turned to her acquainted scientist in despair, but he couldn't make any clarity as well. As as a team, they came to the conclusion that it was someone alien. Unfortunately, the woman could not name the exact place where the shot was made, and the finding fell into oblivion. But what if it was a real clue for studying the alien world? Speaking of aliens, here's this strange creature with a series of yellow spots. It led many people to speculate that it came from another planet. The image published by a man showed a jelly-like figure that curled up into itself. It has a slippery and sticky repellent appearance. A marine ecologist says the unusual creature can be a type of ascidian often found in coastal areas. Each of these small yellow dots is a separate animal called a zooid, all of which are genetically identical in ecology. Another person stated that it was unlikely to be something terrestrial. It looked like something as a symbiote, like in the movie Venom, do you remember? One can only hope that no one got too close to this slime and it didn't manage to enslave anyone. The oldest boa in the world, a creature capable of living up to 500 years, and a giant crocodile whose age exceeded a century. Now I'll show you real long livers from the world of animals. The Old Snake Snakes are rather unpleasant creatures, with which literally no one is eager to contact. And not only that, there are a lot of them in nature. It turns out that these creatures can also live quite a long time. Here, for example, the common boa constrictor. The life expectancy of such creatures is up to 20 years. But there was a separate, absolutely unique case in history. Not far from Philadelphia, a boa constrictor named Popeye was once born. He was a very large and calm representative of the species, which, in addition to everything, was remembered by people for a record lifespan. This boa constrictor lived for 40 years, 3 months and 14 days, which is more than two times higher than the average life expectancy of his relatives. It's still unclear what exactly caused such a thing. Some say it's all about the zoo where he was cared for. They say that the best food was regularly brought to him there. They provided the snake with luxurious conditions and stuff. But after this case, nothing like this has happened in any other zoo. It seems to me that it's all about genetics, and it was just a rarity. The Long-Lived Spider Spiders are no less creepy creatures. Lots of legs, all covered in hair. Yikes. The only good thing is that these creatures usually live no more than a year. Otherwise, there'd be an unthinkable number of them at all. However, such a lifespan did not suit every arthropod. They began to split up and eventually form new species. It turned out that each species had its own life expectancy. And if classic, the most popular spiders lived no more than a year, others are quite capable of living 15 years. And some spiders live 20 or even 25 years. These were the record-breaking numbers until the world became aware of another spider species. In 2018, scientists observed an individual that was 43 years old. Such a long and detailed study of the female of this species made it clear that the huge longevity of these spiders is due to their evolutionary traits, including the fact that they live in wild bushes, as well as have a sedentary lifestyle and a slow metabolism. Who knows, there may be one or even several other arthropod species in nature that have even longer lifespan. It's just that people have not yet learned about them. Henry the Crocodile Crocodiles are those creatures in case of which you can't really talk about a long life. Predators are predators because they're constantly hunting, fighting, defending territory, and taking risks. However, Henry the Crocodile, from the state of KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa, took a different path. The Nile hunter did not fight back or try to escape from the humans. He gave up to their will and arrived at the farm in 1985. At that point, he was already 85 years old. With some simple math, we can conclude that today, Henry is about 123 years old. He's believed to be the oldest living crocodile in captivity today. Before that, by the way, his place was occupied by an Australian freshwater crocodile named Mr. Freshy, but he died in 2010. At that time, he was about 140 years old. 
Who knows? Maybe Henry will overtake this record holder, forever writing his name in history. Yeah, it's at least unusual when you can live more than a full century and still feel great. It's a pity some animals are simply not destined to do this. Cats, for example. They usually live from 12 to 18 years. However, there's a unique exception. A cat named Flossie is currently 27 years old, which is equivalent to 120 human years. The miracle cat was born on December 29, 1995. For such a long period of time, her eyesight and hearing have deteriorated greatly, which is quite natural, but her health in general has remained as good as it was years ago. Flossie's been in several homes in her really long life, but for the first few months she was a stray kitten on the streets of London. She was taken home by an employee of the hospital, next to which the kitten lived. She lived with him for 10 years before the man died. Flossie was taken in by the sister of her late owner, but after 14 years, the second owner also died. So the cat ended up with her second owner's son for three years before she was handed over to volunteers from the shelter. And it was there, it was from the shelter, that rumors about the cat's incredible age began to spread. Alas, the staff at the center wasn't sure Flossie would ever be able to return to a warm home, as people prefer to take in much younger pets. However, Flossie was lucky. According to Vicki Green, the record-breaking cat's new owner, she had always wanted to take care of older animals, so she was happy to take in the 27-year-old cat. No one knows how many more years or months are destined for this cute creature. Maybe she'll even manage to break the record of Cream Puff, the cat, who lived 38 years. A dog for $100,000? Stay with us and I'll tell you about the most expensive dogs in the world. Tibetan Mastiff I'm sure many of you were expecting to see this breed here. The Tibetan Mastiff has long been considered a premium dog that not everyone can afford. Even ordinary and unremarkable puppies can cost several thousand dollars. Purebred individuals are more expensive. But even they're far from record breakers. They're really amazing. The first is a Tibetan Mastiff named Big Splash. He's also known as Hong Dong. In 2011, he caused a stir when it was reported that he was bought for one and a half million dollars. Yeah, yeah, you heard that right. I said dollars, and I said one and a half million. But why so expensive? I mean, he looks like an ordinary dog, not some sort of hybrid between a dog and a tiger or other unique creature. Big Splash weighed 181 pounds at the time of purchase and was almost 3.2 feet long. It's quite typical of the breed, but it's all about the breed itself. Details are important. A Chinese coal magnet bought Big Splash, and he specifically tried to set a record, so he paid too much for a reason. This is because in China, Tibetan mastiffs of red color are considered a symbol of luxury and enormous wealth. This is a very clear sign of wealth, so the rich are trying to overtake each other and get the most expensive mastiff. By the way, the Big Splash record didn't last long. Already in 2014 in China, they bought a one-year-old baby Mastiff, but the price was $2 million. The buyer was a certain businessman from the Chinese province of Zhejiang. At the moment, this dog is the most expensive in the world. Let's see how long this record will last. Okay, it's clear with Chinese Tibetan Mastiffs, they're expensive anyway even though million buck puppies are still astounding. But what if I told you that one of the most expensive dogs in the world is a Labrador? Yes, yes, the one you might even have in your home, lying next to you right now. It turns out that a Labrador can cost over $100,000, but there's only one of them. Here he is, a dog named Lancelot Encore, and he cost $155,000. It's in the dog's name, that the reason lies for its expensive price, because it's a clone. The fact is that in 2008, in the family of the Otto spouses, a grief was, their dog named Sir Lancelot died of cancer. They liked the previous dog so much that they didn't want to get another one. They needed one just like him. So they decided to clone him. DNA from the original deceased dog was taken and the complex procedure resulted in a full clone, an exact replica of Sir Lancelot. The couple was thrilled, but there was a nuance. Since the clone's genes are exactly the same, 
he too will pass away from cancer. That may have already happened, but even so, Lancelot Encore managed to have a hefty offspring in the form of eight puppies. And that's a good thing. Border Collie The Border Collie is a famous British breed of herding dog. It's smart, savvy, alert, energetic, and very expensive. Well, at least this Border Collie is. Her name is Kim, and two years ago, she became a world record holder. The dog was sold in Wales for 27,000 pounds. That was almost $39,000 at the time. As a result, she became the most expensive sheep dog on the planet and even got into the Guinness Book. If in previous cases the price tag was determined by the status or a complex cloning procedure, then everything is simpler here. Kim is very smart, efficient, and just cool. The farmer who bred Kim said that when she was a puppy, her intelligence already corresponded to that of a three-year-old shepherd dog. Kim learns instantly. Sometimes it's enough for her to show something once and she'll remember it. Also, the dog performs a large amount of work on the farm, grazing cattle, protecting sheep, controlling everything, and so on. In general, quite a few sheep dogs become expensive precisely because of their qualities and features. As an example, another expensive dog and former record holder is a sheepdog named Midge. This is also a Border Collie. He was once bought for $10,000. Midge boasts a sweet personality, hardworking features, and exceptional performance. So he was surely worth his money. Kelpie The Australian Kelpie is another sheepdog. These creatures have unique qualities that set them apart from many other breeds. For example, they have a very wide field of vision. Thanks to this, they have much better control over the situation on the pasture. In addition, Kelpies are characterized by good concentration, intelligence, activity, and a gentle nature. All this makes them very good sheepdogs, and some of them are even record breakers. For example, in October last year, a Kelpie named Eve was sold in Australia. A one-and-a-half-year-old dog went under the hammer at auction for $49,000. Turns out that Kim's record has been broken, and now Eve is the most expensive shepherd dog in the world, right? Apparently so, but the Guinness Book is not updated yet. You've already figured out why Kelpies can cost so much, wide field of vision, intelligence, and so on. But still, $49,000? Isn't it too much? This is where the pedigree comes into play. They say Eve has an ideal one, and her skills are great. She's even better than Hoover the Kelpie. He was the previous record holder, who works hard on the pasture like a real robot. And in general, the purchase of Eve is not a waste of money, but a contribution to the future. She'll be able to give birth to puppies, which will then also help the owners of livestock. Still remember the $2 million Tibetan Mastiff puppy? Well, that record may soon be broken. Take a look at this dog. It's a Caucasian shepherd dog named Catabom's Hater, and his owner claims that his pet is the most expensive in the world. However, there is a nuance. The dog was neither bought nor sold. Nevertheless, there is a listing price for the pet. Not so long ago, the owner of the dog, Satish, received an offer. A rich businessman from India liked his dog so much that he wanted to buy Catabombs and offered Satish 200 million rupees for the sheepdog. For you to understand clear, that's almost two and a half million dollars. Satish refused and now tells everyone that he owns the most expensive dog on the planet. This is true to some extent, but still. Tibetan Mastiffs remain the official record holders for the time being. Let's see what happens next. And next, I suggest taking our minds off specific individuals and looking at several breeds, because among them you can also find those that only the real rich can buy. Keep watching to see some of the most expensive dog breeds in the world and learn what they can do. Lochen It would be logical to assume that at least some expensive dog must be very rare, and this is just the case. The Lochen is one of the rarest dog breeds in the world. Back in the late 19th century, Lochens were considered almost extinct, and now less than a hundred Lochens are born in the world every year. Nonetheless, it cannot be said that there are none at all. Some rich people buy these little lion dogs to show off or to participate in exhibitions because these dogs are decorative, cute, and graceful. 
To get a low chen from an experienced and proven breeder, you'll have to pay from five to $8,000. It's probably worth it, I don't know. What do you think? Pharaoh Hound. You'd think this dog's homeland is Egypt. Who else would be named after pharaohs, right? Besides, similar dogs were painted on tomb walls in ancient Egypt. But in fact, it turns out that pharaoh dogs originated from Malta. But their name remained the same as when people thought of them as creatures of ancient Egypt. You'll have to pay seven to seven and a half thousand dollars for a pure breed pharaoh hound, but of course the price can vary, as in the case of generally any dog breeds in the world. One way or another, the pharaoh hound is very expensive. It's caused by the small number of kennels and the difficulty in selecting a parent pair. However, despite all the difficulties in finding a purebred puppy, there are still quite a few people who want to get this expensive and exotic pet all because the pharaoh hound is characterized by an excellent character. The animal quickly finds a common language with people and animals, loves active games, and has innate qualities of a companion. At the same time, the dog remains independent and easily tolerates loneliness, remaining in an empty house for the whole day. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel When you hear such a royal name, you realize it's something rich. And so it is. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is a dog for the wealthy people. From the very beginning, it was intended only for the English nobility. Only they could afford these small and posh creatures. Now, instead of the nobility, they're bought up by all sorts of businessmen and aristocrats. For a puppy, one will have to pay up to $5,000. The reason is not only because of the breed's aristocratic and noble past, but also because of the problems that exist today. It's difficult for breeders to find a suitable pair for mating. In addition, these spaniels are predisposed to a number of genetic diseases. So each individual allowed to breed must undergo mandatory genetic tests and must not be closely related to a mating partner. Otherwise, the risk of congenital diseases in future offspring increases. That's all, guys. What expensive dog would you take in if it could be done for free? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you later.